is to you. We say uh, underhooks a lot in Jiu Jitsu, regardless of whether we're in the uniform or the underhooks, underhooks. I don't know if it's equivalent in um, Judo, but it definitely it comes from wrestling. It comes from underhooks of the king when it comes to controlling your opponent. All right, so we're going to do a little drill about how it's also a technique that helps us practice our underhooks. Right, or adjacent to this. We're going to start with what we call butterfly diving on his knees. Okay. We're, what we're going to do is, I need to break his posture, so I'm going to just use a recruit method of here, and then we get what we call underhooks here. All right. So you want to do that stuff. There's lots of ways to get underhooks. You could just put it on there and try to get underhooks. Generally, I like to play with an, uh, a head and an arm, and I push the underhooks here. Now this is not a great underhook because Jason can kind of fish his arm over and he gets underhooks on it. In which case by the time I and you can keep that really tight around my lats, I can't now get the underhook since so there's no space. Right, so he had it how he originally did over my shoulder, I can now start to push for this and then now he has a lot because you can see there's no gap, it's very hard. So we're gonna play a game and you're gonna work both arms. We're going to start doing this and we're gonna push for the underhooks. And then he's going to refresh and you'll get to refresh with the underhooks. And notice I'm only working one side. When you do butterfly guard, it's recommended that you sit off to one side. It's actually half butterfly, it's called. So you have this annoying knee that's in the way against him. And also these will come into later effect as all this. But you need this first of all. And he's going to fight to get that until you get to a point where he can't get this anymore. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So try the game and then we'll build it up into a sweep. Yes? One, two, three, let's We'll look at the two options. Underhooks play a part in both of these things. So let's look at um, from my end. By the way, I forgot to say, when you're in half butterfly, the, the leading knee is also the leading arm. So really, this is the one I'm trying to get under here. Once I feel I've got good grasp of his back, this becomes a problem for me. Because from here, I can push my face away and take out my arm, and then he fishes for another hook, you see? This is how that works. Right. So there's two purposes for getting this out of the equation. The second problem is that when I do try and swap him, he puts his arm up there, and it becomes a problem. So the simple thing is now we're talking to the world of overhooks, and going over. You could do underhooks. It's not as effective or readily available. Overhooks are much available simply by the mechanics of just being here. Don't just cut here, bring it in. So it looks like he's got an underhook, but he hasn't. This is where it gets confusing. Does Wayne have an underhook, or do I have an overhook? <laughs> well, the, the, the answer is whoever has the control. If Wayne has no control over me with this arm, I have control over him. I need to take his weight to that side. This arm would have prevented, so I take his weight to that side, and this leg here is guiding him to fall. Yeah, that's it. Sample or any one of the number of other finishes you can have. Spin out, you can see. So, then on the left side angle, push your head. I'm that head button. Yeah, he wouldn't actually at the same time be fishing for hair, so when I close this, I can I get the overhook, and this actually makes it harder for him. Even if you've got an underhook on this side, it wouldn't serve much purpose for because I've got the overhook. Make sure you have control over this arm. I need to drag him not onto me, but more over to that side over there. And you can see how his weight is shifting and his leg. And this leg here, yes, you can keep him over, but I prefer to use him more as a guide and guiding him down to where he wants to be. So I don't commit too much because he's actually going to twine his legs around my leg here. So there's more of the nuance. Well, it's essentially a very basic, simple sweep. I fought for the underhook, I fought for the overhook. Another final thing is, as I'm tri tripping over here, he might become quite heavy. He might find it, I might find it a little difficult to shift him. This is where this leg here, the one I'm tripping in my toes here, is not, is not, uh, is comes into action and I push off. So I'm pushing off here. This gives you the power with which to finish off the sweep. So the final thing, all again, so from this angle to the other thing. superior position. Yes? Now let's look at uh, the same technique 
but you are unsuccessful with the unhookable rejection. So we do it this way so you can see. Again, my knee. Now, this time my lead leg, I'm trying to shoot it, and I'm really unsuccessful. He gets an arm me, and I immediately stuff it. I cannot let him get the full arm, i.e., that I cannot get even the overhook. I'm using the word over and under a lot, as well as the word hook. I hope I get to explain myself. See the difference there? Look. Jason has, is about to get the underhook of me, I stuff it with so that I can get at least my hand into here. Right, so he still grabs my lats and I'm sitting. If I'm unsuccessful with this, he reaches in further and he's got a really nice underhook on me and I have a pathetic overhook. So this really is a good illustration of the difference between who has underhook and who has overhook. So I'm trying to get, he gets in and I stuff it really early. Now his arm is trapped. Try the arm out. As long as I've got the elbow, it's hard for him to get it out. He'll get it out with eventually. Right? But eventually he's got a, a move. Don't you do chicken wing arms? Good discipline is always your elbows in. I do the same thing again. I'm fighting for the overhook on the other side. So essentially I have two overhooks. I'm trying to direct it towards that side here, using this foot's power. Take him over here. And the bonus is I can even feed more different kinds of finishes because of the way I'm holding his arms. Um, <coughs> that's the way fast. So For now, let's do this side. By the way, have you noticed? I really I can only leave from one leg. If I try and do it from the other side, I can do it, but it's just a nanosecond slower and I can never get the, the proper I'm slightly better on my left hand side. I'm going for this, he actually gets the other I stop it immediately. I immediately grab here. He tangled up, no problem. And if you know the finish, maybe you want to try something like that. But for now, I'll just get on your side. Anyone want to see that again? Yes, okay, so there was quite a lot of overhooking and a lot of confusion going on. Come closer so you can see. The previous technique, I had successfully got the unhook all the way around and I was able to complete my move, which I saw you do, so you know the technique. In this case, I'm a little bit slower, he's quicker to get the underhook. There, see how he fished in? You want to get this discipline to stuff that as early as you can by trapping it on. And he's just shutting the door here. To the point where it's, he's going to struggle getting his arm. You can even cock it if you want to. And I do the same to think, technique again. Wrap this here. And I'm going to just flip him to the other side. Don't worry about the finish. As long as you end up with his back on the ground and you're here, you're going to be Yes? Okay, three to one, let's go.